But you know, you have, you know, these are just pieces of curriculum. These are storybooks for the preschool, for the kindergarten. You know, of course, pre-literacy stuff mostly in the preschool, but you know, they're being read these stories, they understand it, they understand the language. Um, you know, in, in later grades they're used uh, used for you know the literacy materials. Basket woman, oop, and let me I just talking about this basket ogress. You know, anything related to baskets. So that one was gathering hazel shoots. Uh, I was looking for Hattie. Call me foot Hattie. Oh yeah, here she is. So this is all about, for instance, a individual weaver in Grand Round and Elder, uh, Hattie Hudson. And so, you know, just talks about, uh, I'm gonna look for a nice picture of her. This is all just about their experience. So this is her, that's Hattie and her grandmother, or her mother, her husband, and all their baskets, you know. And so this is just talking about their experience. And this is first-hand experience from really the daughter, some of the younger kids in this picture, just talking about, you know, their experience and just translating them into, you know, kind of homemade storybooks as a way to pass the information on. And so, you know, this is just one way to, one illustration, one example, I guess, of how we're trying to go from these more traditional sensibilities of teaching into a more modern world, still concerned with what, what information we want to get across, but also trying, you know, to meet the requirements of state and federal, you know. Um, well, what time is it? How far over am I? 15 minutes. <laughs> I have, I'm 15 minutes over. You're 15 minutes over, yeah. Okay. Well, let me consult my important notes really quickly. <laughs> the reason I say that is because uh, you guys said some things that really compelled me. I think I kind of said most of what I wanted to say. But, uh, yeah, let me, two, three things. Champuig is actually how you say shampooy. People say shampooy. But if you look at it very, if you look at it, shampooy, you will see very clearly that it's, it's one example where it, they really did a nice job of giving the right English characters. It's just people want to put this French sensibility or something to it. But look at it, and you will see very clearly you can say it perfectly just by the spelling Champuig. Champuig, that's its real name. I've been trying, that's a little bit of a mission of ours, Champuig. <laughs> Get people to think about that because, you know, it's a, it's a Kalapuya. That's a Kalapuya language. That's the Kalapuya language from Willamette Valley. Champuig. Um, Chinooks are still provisioners. I just wanted to say that because, you know, we're really in Willapaw Bay and, and around our homes, you know, we are, I think Chinooks make up something like 75% of the crab fishing fleet for the Quinault uh, Reservation and Quinault allotment of, uh, you know, crab fishing were, you know, owners and that of much of the oyster business in Willapaw Bay. I mean, you know, Chinooks have kept on with this business. Many of the uh, commercial fleet uh, owners in Willapaw Bay or Chinooks, and that's really important stuff to us, you know, to, to remind people of. So even though we've lost, in many cases, our aboriginal right to hunt and fish, or at least temporarily, we are still continuing on with this way of, of you know, living. And uh, one other thing, what was that? <laughs> Sorry, I just, while well, I can, I may as well say <laughs> Oh, I did want to say one thing about potlatching because it kept coming up. And just for everybody's information, uh, potlatching, the, the most important thing in my mind for people to think about because it is so important is that potlatching basically involves guests coming and whatever is going to happen there, whether it's uh, naming or, you know, whatever the event is, whatever's happening, a new baby's being brought out and they want to raise its status. A, Canoes getting named, a uh, kid, a uh, family's getting named, you know, traditional names are being given out. Whatever's happening at a potlatch, the most bare bones way to describe it is that you've come, you sit here and listen to us, or I enumerated my genealogy, Sam names his genealogy. By you sitting there and listening to us, 
whatever's happening here on the floor, we call it work. That's how we usually say it in English now. We're doing work, business, whatever. Just traditional work. Then at the end of the day, when we're giving away gifts, you know, whether it was, maybe it's a wedding, whatever it is, by you taking the gifts that we're giving and walking away, you've acknowledged our right to everything that we've said or done. So if I were, uh, you know, we're giving the name Atlaho, we're giving that name away to somebody, and we've, you know, talked about it, we've put it on this person, we've had witnesses, we've given you gifts and you went home happy, you've acknowledged that was our right, right? It also means that you are witnesses also, you're going to go home and hopefully, and it's one of the things you hear all the time at our gatherings, is somebody will stand up, you know, that man that passed away, Lester Green, that person that his, he was in these pictures from Macaw that Sam was talking about, his name. Uh, well, anyway, he, you know, he would always stand up and say, because he was the chief from the village of Wyatch at Nia Bay, I'm going to go home and I'm going to tell my people that the Chinook people remember their ways, they whatever, you know, this is what we say to each other, you know, when we see people doing good work. By taking a gift, you just acknowledge whatever you heard here, and you kind of are forfeiting your right to say something about it later. If there's, if you don't believe I have the right to give away the name Atlahof, you better speak up, because I'm here, I'm telling you, that's my family's name, we're going to give it away, we put it on somebody, you took the gifts and you walked away, it's just, it's a, it's a contract in a funny way. But I think it's important to know that's what potlatching is, is, you know, whatever rights, the songs, every song I sang up here, if nobody bucked it, nobody says that it's not mine to sing, whatever, and you took the gifts and went home, that's just, it's raising up our status. It's just acknowledging all the things that we own. And, uh, you know, that's, that's the basics of what potlatching is from our perspective. And I think it's a good thing to teach for the kids. You know, it's nice for them to know something a little deeper than just that this, there's this thing called potlatching where you just give everything away. So it's really not what's exactly going on. Anyway, thank you very much.